Good afternoon. This is Drew Erickson back again talking about money, not math, because I love our country, but I believe our government is terrible at managing money and should not control our financial future. So my goal is to talk about money and the ways to create and protect our wealth, um, hopefully to provide value to those who take the time to listen. So I apologize for the ding there. My phone's going off. Um, in today's conversation, I don't typically talk about specific um, strategies or products. I more talk about ideas uh, and challenges during this, these conversations, but it is Life Insurance Awareness Month. So September is Life Insurance Awareness Month. So I just thought I'd do uh, one quick video on uh, life insurance uh, just to kind of hopefully get you thinking about it. It's not always a fun conversation because oftentimes when we think of life insurance, we think of what do we leave those we love uh, once we die and no one likes to think about dying. Um, but the reality of it is it's, it's an important part of financial planning and, and protecting not only our wealth while we're living, but also protecting our wealth once we're gone. So um, on the Limera website, they, it, that talks about September is Life Insurance Awareness Month. They say this year, the COVID-19 pandemic has raised the awareness of the fragility of life and how precarious financial stil stability can be. Despite the fact that people generally recognize the value of life insurance, Limera research shows 46% of Americans are uninsured and many more do not have enough coverage. Before the pan pandemic, nearly one in three families said they would face financial challenges within a month if the primary wage earner died. And it's, it goes on to say that below our resources and so on and so forth. But I just wanna read that last sentence again. Before the pandemic, nearly one in three families said they would face financial challenges within a month if the primary wage earner died. So ask yourself, could you and your family survive if you passed away unexpectedly from a financial standpoint? Could you and your or your family survive if your spouse passed away unexpectedly from a life event, from a financial standpoint? Of course, emotions are going to be hard, but from a financial standpoint, could you and your family pass away if either you or your spouse passed away unexpectedly from a financial standpoint? If you could survive for how long? If you're not really sure of the answer to that, and I know it's not a fun question, I strongly encourage you to have a conversation with someone you trust about what your current coverage looks like and what options are available to you. Because if it's important to you to protect your loved ones while you're alive, isn't it equally as important to protect them once you're gone? So just to give you one quick example, I've gone over this in the past with my good friend, Ross Welty, um, but just to give you a, a quick example of a way to think about life insurance, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen. All right, so again, I know it's not the most exciting conversation, but I think it's an extremely important one. So when we look at, when we think about, Melissa's well, loading here, I'll keep talking. Um, when we think about protection, all right, so um, again, the offensive planning is a whole lot more fun, but when we think about protection, protecting our, our most valuable assets, we often are thinking about our cars, our houses, and so on and so forth. Well, if you are making just $50,000 a year to this year, right? So it's not, you know, it's decent income, not a, not, a, not a ton, not very little. It's just kind of, it's decent, right? And you are working for 20 more years. You're on pace to make about $1 million. $1 million over the next My handwriting's terrible, but hopefully you get the point. $1 million over the next 20 years. And that doesn't include raises. It doesn't include anything. It's just how much you are on pace to make. Or let's say you, you have a kid this year. Over the next 20 years while you're raising them, you're on pace to make $1 million. All right, so if we take a step back and we think about the other you know expensive assets in our lives, and let's say you have a $20,000 car. Do you have car insurance? Now, I know it's required by law in our country to have car insurance, but even if it wasn't, would you have car insurance? And if you would, the reason, I can't hear anyone responding, but hopefully you're thinking about this. The reason most people have car insurance is so that if you get in a car accident, like I did last year, I only had a $500 deductible that I had to pay, let's put D for deductible, and the insurance company was on the hook to pay the remaining $19,500 to fix my car. I didn't actually total it, but had I, that's what they would have had to pay, right? That's why we have car insurance. 
Now, if you own a home that's worth, let's just say $200,000, do we have homeowner's insurance? Yes, right? Almost all of us have homeowner's insurance. And why is that? Because if something happens to our home and it gets destroyed, we want a new home, but we don't, we don't want to pay for the whole new home. So we have about a $1,000 deductible and we shift the remaining risk to the insurance company. So they're on the hook for $199,000, right? That's why we have insurance. It's to, it's to shift the risk from ourselves to the company in the, in the, in the case of a worst case scenario, right? Well, if you're on pace to make about a million dollars next year, and let's say you work at a place of business that gives you three times your income. Well, three times your income is about $150,000. So if you have $150,000 of life insurance, that's the amount that if you pass away, the insurance company is going to replace for your family. All right, that's what they're on the hook for. Your family is gonna miss out on about $150,000 that you would have made over the next 20 years. All right, so this is a very simple example of what life insurance is for and what it does, but I think it's extremely important because we're so often, we're trained to think about how much do we make this year, right? And if you think about how much you make this year of 50,000, right? If you have $50,000 income in this example, $150,000 life insurance might seem like a lot of money for your family, but that only helps them for three years. What about the remaining years of potentially raising your kids, right? Or oftentimes people will have, if they have a $200,000 home, they'll make sure they have $200,000 of life insurance because that's what their property and casualty agent sold to them because it's, you know, it's just an easy correlation. Pay for the house, right? But if the house is paid off or all the other debts taken care of, are your kids school paid for, their activities paid for, college, weddings, all the other things that kids cost money, right? For baby formula, my daughter's a month old now and that costs money, right? Diapers, all this stuff costs money. So if we just cover the debt of the home, are we really helping to raise the kids? So again, I'm not trying to go down the really boring and sad conversation of life insurance, but at the end of the day, it's one of the most important topics and conversations we can have when it comes to well-rounded financial planning. So I'll ask you again, are you comfortable or are you confident that your family would be financially okay if something happened to you tomorrow or your spouse? If the answer is no, you aren't confident that they would be okay, I challenge you to have a conversation with some you trust about the options available to you. I'm not saying you have to even get more life insurance, but at least look into what your options are and have that conversation with your loved ones so that you know what could happen when you're not here. Because if you're like me and you care about protecting your family while you're alive, isn't it just as important to worry about protecting them once we're gone? All right, so on the other side of that, as I'm not gonna get into the long a long conversation about how life insurance can also be used for offensive planning, but from a protection standpoint, it's September is Life Insurance Awareness Month. If you have any follow-up conversations, you can check out the link that I'll include on this website from limera.com. You can absolutely reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation with you about protecting your wealth while we grow it. Um, and, or you can reach out to someone else that you trust if you already have that person in your life. So thank you for taking the time to have this conversation with me today. Uh, please reach out and let me know what you think. Or if you have questions, I always appreciate having a good dialogue around these conversations. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.